Morning YouTubers, uh, welcome back to Allotment Diggers. Well in this episode I'm going to be showing you um, me um, planting some cabbage, um, some collies, um, some Brussels sprouts into the bed what we just removed the onions out of and uh, I'm also going to take you on a tour of the plot and uh, we'll probably end up finishing up with um, a potato reveal. Um, I've got a bucket of um, swift um, what was uh, struggling it's only 60 days since we put them in but I'm going to show you that one to start off with uh, we're going to be lifting some shallots as well um, just out of one bed because we've got something else to go in that bed and um, well the first thing I'm going to start off is uh, what do you think about this um, hose pipe dam now for the last 20 years um, the water companies keep telling us we have to put your bills up to pay for the maintenance of all the water pipes well that's a load of rubbish as everybody who's got half a brain knows it's um, the reason why the the price goes up is to, uh, to pay their shareholders an extra dividend every year and year in year out um, it goes up about a billion pound and um, these the only people who are benefiting from it really are the shareholders it's an absolute disgrace and then the guns a bit of um, sunshine they stick a nose pipe ban on and before long if it gets any worse they'll be um, putting standing pipes in the street um, water should be free for everybody um, but uh, privatisation all this rubbish I, honestly it makes my blood boil that being said the water ban uh, hose pipe ban isn't for another week and I have got some um, IBC water tanks uh, 2000, well I've got 2000 litres worth of um, storage I've got two water tanks so I thought what the heck let's get them topped up so I topped the back one up now I come to top the middle one up and I brought the, um, the tap um, the the cap what goes on to the, the on the, the the tank itself it's got a pipe with a tap on it but you've got this um, screw what you can actually screw an attachment on it well it's the attachment that I broke and silly me when I got these tanks I didn't realize that I was getting um, the one percent that has the the fine threads the other 99 percent have the coarse thread now the coarse thread ones are 62 miller that's the diameter of what you screw on. The, the fine thread, uh, eight, uh, 58 miller. And the difference in the two, uh, the fine thread costs twice as much as the, the coarse thread because they're a lot, a lot rarer. Anyway, with the, um, with the internet, I actually uh, found a, a company that actually supplies the, the fine thread one. And I actually purchased one. It cost me a tenner. The, the, the coarse thread one would have cost me a fiver, so it just goes to show um, how much they how, how much they are. They basically double. So if you're getting an IBC water tank, try and get the ones with the coarse threads. They're the 62 milli diameter. And anyway, so uh, we we ordered one. It turned up, and I want to show you me actually putting it on with um, some um, PVA uh, tape and. Um, then we'll top it up. I'll show me uh, show me topped up and what have you, and uh, we'll take it from there. So let me show oh you guys the uh, the tap broke on me uh, water, but and uh, well we got a drip on this, so I need to uh, to sort it out. So we got a tap here. This is this would be the um, they, they do two types of uh, thread. Uh, they do the coarse thread, which is 99% of these what these um, water tanks. And then there's this one, where it has a fine thread, which is a very fine, it's a 58 miller, whereas the, the coarser thread are like 62 miller. Anyway, I've got a drip here, so I'm going to stick some of this um, PVA on it, tape, and uh, hopefully then we can um, seal, the, seal the leak, and everything should be onky dora. So, just start to work out screwing it that way so I want it to go this way don't I here anyway it's just a matter of I haven't got those scissors and I'm just going to wrap this round the thread 
a few times. Well, actually, quite a lot of times, really. So I need it to, to seal. I think that should be enough. Now then, this just just screw on, and hopefully we won't get a drip. Actually, you shouldn't turn it by this tap here. You turn it by this bit here. Well, there you go. We've um, we've yeah. put a brand new the brand new tap on here. Um, I would happen to have the um, the one with the um, the finer thread. 99% of them have a coarse thread on these and uh, yeah I went and picked up the one with um, with the, the the fine thread and it's like 1% of them have the fine thread whereas the other 99 have the coarser thread. This is a 58 milli if you're interested to know, the, the cap that is, fine thread 58 milli, the coarse thread is uh, 62 milli so that's if you've got a coarse red one that's what you want you want the 62 milli one coarse red just make sure the threads are cut um, you get the correct thread otherwise you you won't um, you, you just have to order again but these are expensive because they're rarer um, this is this cost me 10 pound for all this here whereas the other one uh, uh, only cost me a five pound so what I'm basically paying for is this here the finer thread that's it so um, anyway we've got enough water here to see us through um, this dry spell and um, I've got two of these water butts and they're both full now so uh, yeah the the good news is um, I won't have to um, walk 100 yards to the bloody tap to fill my watering cans I can just fill them by this here so there you go, the tanks are all full. I thought while well, we're at it, we'll top the other um the the water butts up. When I was um I was reading the paper last night about um there was a bit been a survey done on on allotments and 70% 70 percent of um water butts contained legionnaires. That's what it said in the paper. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. However, I do um empty mine every couple of months and I sterilise them with um, some Dettol, clean it all out and then let the rain obviously fill them back up but in this case we've had no rain for six weeks so um, well, we have had rain now, um, we had a couple of days of rain, fortunately um, it's filled the butts back up but um, yeah just be aware, um, legionnaires um, it's it's prevalent in a lot of the the buckets. You can actually get tablets what you can throw into the the water, but you know, buckets to um, to prefer, pre prevent any uh, water bound uh, water bound diseases um, from um, you know living in these tanks. But you should always have a lid on them. Now I've got a lid on the IBCs, but unfortunately I've got lids on these um, these two water butts outside of the front of the greenhouse. Um, the front greenhouse that is uh, but the water doesn't stay in there for more than um, a week a couple of weeks and um, it's constantly drained and we're constantly using it so yeah anyway we've with that in mind uh, just be aware it's, it's uh, can be deadly uh, there's a lot of things can kill you on allotments and uh, there's another one anyway moving on um, we um, took some shallots out of one of the beds the other the, side of the middle greenhouse the other day and um, just quickly I think I might have a little clip to show you if we haven't we're just going to move on however uh, we've got something else what we're going to be sticking in in, in its place so um, let me show you these these shallots well today we're just going to lift these um, shallots up they're not come so much you know they're, they're quite edible there's uh, some some few nice ones there but um, this sun's just uh, basically destroyed them and um, we're just getting going and what's happened is the uh, the sun's just uh, made them go over so we're going to lift them out and uh, we're going to turn this bed over to something else I'll be showing you that in a minute or two but first things first we're going to take the nets off and then give it a bit of a cleaning up and um, and we'll, we'll show you what we're going to be putting in here 
There's sort of shallots I'm getting anyway. That's a, that's, they're, they're the shallots. So they're not too bad. Just just not a lot, lot of them to be quite honest with you. Yeah. Clear the, um, the muck off them. Anyway, we're just going to pile them into the bucket. And then we can crack on what we've got to plan for this bed. Well, we got all the weeds out, so I'm just going to give it a quick hoeing, and I'm just going to put these into the into the bucket, weed bucket. Get me all out and give it a quick hoeing. Should take no more than a few minutes. Bone dry. We've had rain today, guys. Um, just a bit of it. And it's absolutely done nothing to the, uh, to the bed itself. Absolutely crazy. Anyway, so bad done. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stick um, some dahlias into this bed in some buckets that I've got. And uh, yeah, that didn't take two minutes to do. And uh, don't let me kid you, this soil is, is be beautiful, but it's uh, very dry. Uh, let me just bend down and just show you. And there you go. So, a couple of weeds there. I'm sure, the chickens have finished them off. But uh, yeah, it's all intents and purposes. It's uh, been old. Oh, there's that bloody lichen. Don't know we missed that. But couldn't do that again. Yeah, lichen guys, that there. So it tells you we have been. There's, there's been water in here for them to actually grow. They won't grow if the bone dry. And I'm not too sure what that weed is. Uh, probably. Um, no, I can't really identify it. That's a little bit of grass. Basically, that's what we got in the beds. Um, a few docks, small docks. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, not too bad for weeds. 
So anyway, I'm going to get these dahlias now and uh, plonk them in here. I think we should have took the biggest first. Oof. Oh dear. Hey. Hey, catch me breath. Well, this is a bit of a storage area for me, um, me dahlias. And uh, there's a few other flowers there as well. But, uh, we're just going to leave them there for the, the summer, and uh, we'll deal with them um, when we when we have to. But, um, for now, um, my dahlias are sitting pretty there. So the shallots weren't too bad. Um, then what I just what we did we took some onions out of uh, one of the beds as well. You, um, the last episode you see me taking them out. Well, that soil was bone dry. But what you didn't see me do was put um, a load of uh, lime into that bed. The reason why I put lime in there is because I'm going to be putting brassicas in that bed, and uh, today was the day that we put the brassicas in. So a bit earlier on, um, I put some collies. Uh, three different varieties of cabbage and I even put um, some Brussels sprouts whether uh, anything comes of them it's a bit late now but this weather uh, might, might might get them going um, it might be January February before we have any but uh, I thought we'd stick them in anyway because we actually got them in the greenhouse so I'm going to show you um, a, a clip of me doing a few of them I'm not going to show you me doing the old bed a few uh, collies and a few Brussels sprouts to start and the finish basically and I'll show you what the, the video, I'll show you what it all looks like at the end okay so let me take it down there now and uh, show you what well, guys, at the moment I'm, I'm planting me um, some some collies called Gillian and uh, I've got two more to put in here and uh, well we just uh, we're going to be putting some cabbages in, some pointy cabbages. Uh, believe it or not, I've got some, did some red ones and some white ones. But uh, yeah, we just, I've tried well the net up here at the, at the same as um, try, try to show you what I'm doing. So uh, I just put the camera in a different position and I'll show you me just planting these. And uh, we'll crack on with the rest of them. Getting caught up in everything here. Good hard firming in. We really do like firming in these uh, uh, collies and any all the brassicas. So I'll put eight collies in here and give the rest away. And uh, we'll move on to something so else now. You can probably see. Um, we're just putting the last of the uh, brassicas in and these are um, called Winston and uh, a Brussels sprout uh, so just gonna drop them in the holes um, these need a real hard firming in grow quite tall you see so that's the reason why you, you need a good firming in uh, we're, we're only doing eight we're never going to eat any more than eight anyway um, well what the 
the produce from eight of plants. Although saying that we, we have Brussels sprouts every Sunday uh, for dinner. Any dead leaves remove them. I know it's a bit late, but then again, everything started late this year, and uh, we're just we're still playing catch up. I just removed this um, piece of wood. This is my template. I use this to to do my lines. But I can see this last row here pretty, pretty easy. Making sure this net goes right the way over them. There's a lot of cabbage white uh, butterflies around the place. The last thing you want them laying the eggs on the leaves. Plant them a little bit deeper. Make them sturdy. They have been known to put canes in, in, in these when they start getting taller. Pulled a bloody leaf off there, that was silly of me, wasn't it? Last one. It's the last one just here. So that's the F1 Winston. Whether outcomes of them, I don't know, but over goes the nets. Well, we've got the nets on, and as you see, we've actually see these ones inside here. These hold the nets off the the brassicas, and the other ones just. Um, just anchor the nets on, but uh, yeah, we've got um, five varieties of brassicas in there, so as you can see. But um, from the the far end up there, we've got these uh, called uh, these cauliflower called galleon, and then the next ones are longer. The um, the January Kings uh, number threes. They're like a got like a purpley um, colour to the uh, to the cabbage, and then we've got these. Um, the, the pointed, first of the pointed cabbage, they're called Regency F1 uh, Sweethearts, if you can believe that. Uh, the other pointed cabbage, it's a purple cabbage, it's called uh, Trinity. That's these ones here, these, you can probably see the purple, okay. And uh, finally we've got these um, Brussels sprouts called F1 uh, Windsors. So that's these ones down here. So, Yep, they're, they're all in there. We've uh, actually lined this bed, we, and then we, we've, um, obviously we've we turned it over for the second time, but we've we've um, emptied about in total about 25 buckets of water into here just to um, to to rejuvenate the soil. It was like um, it was it's like talcum powder, but uh, yeah, the 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 but the 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 cabbage whites can't get in here, so that's a good that's good news. And uh, hopefully we'll get a few cabbage in the next, well, in about a month and a half, two months. Um, the way they, they've been flying up, um, it shouldn't be next to no time. But, uh, yeah, we've got the hottest day of the year today, so I'm going to have to get in there and give them a bit of water. So there we go, they're all in. Um, I, I thought, well, what we'll do now is uh, take you on a bit of a tour of the, the allotment, take you right round the plot, show you what's happening, some beautiful flowers coming up as we speak. So I thought I'd share that with you. And um, after that, well, who knows? But uh, let's get on the tour and um, show you what the plot looks like. It's moving at the moment, but it's a southwesterly four mile an hour wind today. Believe it or not, humidity is a 72 percent and uh, well the temperature at the moment is uh, 21 degrees and apparently it's supposed to be the hottest day of the year but clearly it isn't look at the clouds up there um, I don't know what the, the chance of rain is but um, it looks very ne negligible uh, anyway let's move on
Oh, uh, UV index is about a three, so, you know, at the end of the day, it's not too bad. These uh, marigolds are starting to open now. Look at the, uh, this is what the marigold, these are the marigolds, aren't they beautiful? And uh, in amongst them, you've got the um, lilies. Another little lily there. There's different lilies in amongst these. these I didn't realise it's just how big these would grow. But uh, again, we've got some primrose here. There's my feather. We put that in my cap and we started dancing the other day. And uh, well, it started to rain. So these are Candy Crush. More primrose there. Um, let's take you into this greenhouse. Now we just put a bloody big paving stone here. But what we do, we stand in the door. And... Uh, as you can see, all the grapes are starting to ripen now. And um, you can see there's plenty of um, cucumbers on these plants. Uh, inside there, there's plenty of uh, peppers. Everything's doing wonderful. Little, um, little dahlia there is doing wonderfully. Beautiful flowers. Again, there's peppers there, which is... It's a bit tight in the greenhouse at the moment. We've just stuck one of these bloody baskets in there, so uh, bags of uh, compost in there. Uh, I don't know how many copes with that scarf on him and his coat there, uh, but uh, 113 degrees inside this greenhouse. Absolute nightmare to, to actually water in there, but we have been. As you can see, the water, we water from below. And anyway, let's move out of there. Let's have a look at these. We've got a few runners in these strawberries. The ground's all cracking here. You can see the ground's like fishes in the bloody ground. It's terrible. And um, some of the strawberries are not liking it and they're sort of dying back. This is a beautiful gladiola. Lovely purples on this. Look at that. Absolutely awesome. Almost as big as me. Nearly six foot tall, this bugger. Again, we've got a little rose here. The um, raspberry canes are starting to grow. Uh, got a lot of dahlias in here. Got more dahlias on the back, I'll show you them in a bit. But uh, yeah, there's um, some beautiful dahlias here, They're all starting to come up. And then amongst them, you've got all these pastel coloured um, gladiolas. You notice the, the, the dark purple ones there, they're absolutely awesome. Again, cosmos is starting to come up here. You got, there won't be long before these will be flowering. Again, um, this is the marigolds, the crackerjack marigolds. I love what I've got here. What the hell this has got in here? I don't know, but you know what it is, don't you? It's a tomato plant. <laughs> I thought I'd leave it. Here's uh, some of them petunias, and uh, they look pretty good. Um, we put liners in these. Um, again, more gladiolas there. See them, and there's marigold, there's, there's, there's uh, dailies in them amongst these coming up now. That one's fallen over, we'll have to do something with that. Uh, we've picked a load of these um, red currants and what have you. We will be doing something with this bed, it's uh, it's a bit of a mess, really. But we'll, we'll come to that, but there's, they, we won't be taking the sedum out or the espelia here. There's a new feature, a little water feature for the birds. Again, we've got lots of gladiolas all the way along here. There's a few dahlias in amongst here. Uh, we've harvested some of these um, gooseberries. There's plenty more gooseberries there. Uh, yeah, the sun's taken its toll on some of these, but the, you know, there's more coming up as we speak. A few the lilies have all died back now, but again, look at this uh, this cosmos they are. Look at that, beautiful isn't it? What a beautiful flower. I didn't realise it grows so big. There's my favourite dahlia of all time. The Misty Day. Absolutely awesome. I love that dahlia. The roses, they're starting to succumb to the the sun. Again, all the um the sunflowers are starting it's just there's some coming up as some are dying back, but we'll take the seeds for next year. These are all called little Leo along here. Um again. Um, we got these are the herbs. There's golden oregano. There's bloody sorrel. There's um, there's mint. These they're going in the compost. These are one day 
uh, old lilies or one is it yeah one they flower and then they die and then another one comes up I think this is clover a type of clover four leaf clover by looking at it again lots of flowers in here this uh, blueberries there this is what I've come over here for to show you. I want someone if you can identify this for me. I've got two of them, I was given these. Look at that there. That's absolutely beautiful. Cornflowers, look at that, even white ones there. Absolutely outstanding. Um, what else we got here where you can see all the fruit on the trees. Oh, look at that. Now, I hope you know, anyone who's squeamish, look away. But the reason why my fruit is so good is because, look inside there guys, that's these um, fly traps, uh, the, most of them in there are flies, and um, well, it just goes to prove that it's actually working. Have a look up here, look at this one, again, full of flies, need emptying really, and the reason why the, the apples are as they are, they look beautiful. Look at all these apples here, absolutely covered. Uh, no, no marks on them at all. So they, they do work. Anyway, let's get out of this jungle. These are the younger trees. We took the fruit off these. This one's dead. Well, it's not dead, but you know, it's not looking good. Might replace that one. Again, there's a few little flowers here. I don't know what them ones are. Um, but. Yeah, it's all looking good along the back here. Did we, let's go around this way, eh? Sorry about the swing in the camera. Um, but we're just heading over to where the rhubarb is. Again, we've got more of these, uh, this cosmos here. These are um, lupins, some roses there. Still the flower and the, the die back. Um, the alliums, we're going to be taking all these tops off these alliums and collecting the seed very shortly. I need a bag to do that. The rhubarb, well, we're just letting it grow this year. We're not going to harvest any. As you can see, some flowers all the way along here, little Leo. And um, there's still some there. To, you can see them just coming up now. We've actually got a couple of bigger ones here starting to, to grow. These are not little Leo. They're, they're another, another um, sunflower. Anyway, we need to come back this way because I want to show you in this greenhouse here. Yeah, we we fixed that now. That's all been fixed. No water leaking. Full to the top. And uh, let's just move this out of the way. See, we've very we could have organised ourselves here. We can't even get in because I've got this butt here, which uh, we did a potato reveal. You're going to see that potato reveal in a bit. Um, but I only reckon it was only going to get a pound in weight. But uh, as you can see. Tomatoes are doing wonderfully, absolutely awesome. There's a lot of uh, people on here that got bottom end rot, uh, where they got underneath here is all black. Uh, fortunately for me, mine are fine. Them there, well, they need to be tipped out. These, they're the um, the celery. They're almost white. They really needed to be planted on. I just didn't have the space to put them anywhere. As you can see, we've got the Joe Longs, um, the Oxon, peppers. There's uh, actually chili, chilies down there. There's all sorts of things coming up. These um, Telegraph F1 cucumbers, they're starting now. And there'll be, quite, there'll be quite a few of them on here. But uh, everything's um, doing well in this greenhouse. Let's close the door. What we're looking at here is um, this, the sweet corn. It's getting bigger. Uh, we only put it in last week. We should have had this in about six, seven weeks ago. Beans. We've been collecting beans off these um, these broad beans here. These have been there's quite a lot on here. There's one of my girls there watching what I'm doing. Um, the broom banana slots are doing okay, and this beetroot. Um, you can actually eat the the leaves on this beet, beetroot, and it looks pretty healthy. There, my girls, in there, up to no good. Um, we, we've got here, we've got cos lettuce, uh, we've got radicchio, and we've got um, little gem. And uh, you, well, you've seen the these uh, 
cabbages and collies and what have you. The next thing is uh, sorting these potatoes out. Um, these are the uh, runner beans we grow and they're just starting to come now as you can see. What we're looking at here are a load of dahlias. I'll tell you more about these again. Apparently these, are, these I, I do know they've got another name but um, people call them Lucifer for some reason. Some tomatoes over here. Um, we need to take some of these dead leaves off them before we get blight everywhere. Um, now we've just done one of these potatoes. It was we're going to do that. That's another swift there. Like I said, we cut water up behind them, so they've took a right hammer in. Um, the pond's looking good. There's actually seen a goldfish in there the other day. Oh, there's a frog there. I see a frog just poking out the. Got this little lead sticking out. In fact, there's about half a dozen frogs in there. I can see them all. It's just look. Oh, it's perfect for them. I don't know if you can see them. Move that leaf back there. You can see the heads just poking out. I can see three or four there. Absolutely awesome. But uh, yeah, this is a lemon balm. Again, we'll be harvesting the tops off these um, yellow flag harvests. Well, the um, leeks are doing well. We only put them in um, a few weeks ago, and look at them now. They're all stood up to attention. They're all looking miserable. Was uh, I was wondering whether they'd, um, they'd stand up, but look at them now. They look brilliant. Um, Celeriac's doing well. Um, you can see the leaves falling on the floor. That's perfectly natural. That's what they do. And uh, once they start to die back, you just pull them off and. Uh, and the bulb just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Again here, this is a self-blanching celery. And uh, you can see there's three different stages here. Week apart. Broccoli, well, n not much happening with the broccoli at the moment. Uh, but they, they get the arts on them. And there's the other water tank up there. Uh, that's full. So yeah, the the plot's looking fairly good, and uh, yeah, these um, these apples look absolutely mint. I'm surprised that we've got so many. We've lost thousands of them. They've been falling on the floor left, right, and centre. We've been must have picked around about. 300 apples up, but just look at the trees, they're just full of them. Anyway, there's a, there's a rhubarb, that's it really. That's, that's the plot looking towards the sheds. So I'm just going to sit over there and have a nice cup of coffee now. And uh, we'll, after I've had the coffee, I'll show you that potato reveal. Well, as you can see, everything looks really wonderful. And um, you can see the new additions there, there's the dailies and then buckets and then flowers, I think they're called Lucifer. And as you saw in the videos, if someone can identify that, um, that purple leaf flower that was on the table, that'd be much appreciated. Um, it was a gift, so, um, and they did say what it was. She so says a beautiful flower for you. Um, there you go, mate, two of them. And as you you did uh, at the, the very end, I thought, well, we'll go and do a potato reveal. The reason why we're doing it is because these um, swift, we've not been able to water them, and they, they've all died back. Now we we put them in about six about um, about sixty days ago, if that, and um, they've withered away, as you just as you as you will see. And I can tell you, the the soil bone dry, so we've not been able to water them. So I'm looking at a pounding weight. So let's uh, get the, the scales and we'll go and weigh them. We'll go and uh, lift these, this bucket over, get it in the wheelbarrow and see well, what we've we uh, We've uh, grabbed that bucket of spud swift um, from uh, near the pond. I've got my bucket, my scales, my bag, and I've even got me, uh, me to throw my weeds in. Uh, there's the wheel, that weed there. I don't know if that is a weed. I hope I haven't pulled a flower up. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Oh bloody hell, I've got a wasp there, get out of it, being attacked by a wasp. Anyway, we've got all the bits what we need here. 
and uh, see if there's a date on these. Oh, yeah. 1905. So they went in on the 19th for the uh, uh, 05. So anyway, I, I, I think there's hardly any spuds in this bucket, but um, they died back, so we, we're gonna we're gonna have at it, and we're gonna see if there's anything at all in here. So I say it was only about not even two months, two months. So. Uh, I could use this compost as well for um, some something else I've got. Right, so that's the top of it. Did I leave the camera rolling? This is where I always make the mistake. No, it's rocking and rolling. Uh, there, yeah, that don't look too promising, does it? Take all this. Oof. Right, pull all this. Makes it easier. Well, it looks like there's nothing. Oh, we've got a spud. There you go. So I do know this, 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 and look how scabby. Right, let's flip the bucket over and see what we've not got. Here we go. I reckon a pound in weight. Let's see what we've really got. Okay, we've got a few more in a pound in weight. It's very dry. Can't, well, you can't really see how dry it really is. Well, the good news is, I think we've beat a pound. The bad news is, uh, this compost is absolute bone dry. Absolutely. Ew, we just found the uh, seed potato. Now, if I could have watered these properly, Reckon we were done all right here. Absolutely bone dry. There's probably one or two more spuds in there, but I give up. Look at this. God, I've had to work for these bloody spuds. Let's get there. So they went in on the 19th of the 5th. So what's the, what's the date? It's, just, it's not even... It's about... Uh, I don't know how many, how many weeks it is. I don't know what the date is. It's the 21st today, is it? The 22nd? Well... Don't even think we've been in eight weeks, these. But uh, they're the spuds, so see what we got.
So there we go, some new potatoes. So let's get the scales out. I think we need to set them to pounds if we can get the buggers to work. Come oh, here we go. Right, they're kilos. So there's no chance in it. Next one. So we set them to pounds. Let's grab the bag. And I said we'd be lucky if we've got a pound in weight. And I was not joking when I said that. But uh, it turns out it's sort of teetering on just just below three pound. Uh, it's a couple of grams off three pound. So, well, that's twice as much as uh, three times as much as I actually thought we had. And. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, this you can see the skin's peeling on them. So I'm not too not too um, worried that we've only got that. I actually thought we'd add less than that. So there's a bonus, and it is that is the fifth, 1905. If you look back, you can't see when I actually did these. So what I'm trying to work out what it is. Uh, tw tw uh, Eleven. 41 60 60 days they've they've been in about 60 days and uh yeah we've got a uh, three pound of spuds out of them well, not bad for 60 days in fact I, i'm pretty <laughs> pretty chuffed it ain't a pound anyway which i actually thought it was so there we go three pound well that's that's three times more than i thought we had uh, honestly, um, we've really struggled this year for watering. The watering pattern in the potato buckets has really struggled. So I don't think I'm going to have any sort of good weights this year at all. No, nowhere near the 18, 18 pound four ounces what we had last year. That was a record year. Each year has been a record year. But then again, we didn't rely, we didn't reckon on the, the this drought that we're in at the moment. So um, we'd be lucky if we get five or six pound best out of the bucket. So I'm not, I'm not too bothered. Like I say, we're up against the um, this year. What with the the freezing conditions, then the rain, and now and now this um, the sunshine. Not complaining about the sunshine too much, um, but you know it's been a tough one. And uh, yeah, we've managed to come through it. Uh, but yeah, three pound of um, swift, not bad. I can live with it, I suppose. Anyway, I'm gonna head off now, give him a good cleaning, and uh, I think we're gonna have that um, some um, bachelor's peas, uh, some finny haddock, and a big knob of butter on there for us to see. So I'm gonna get off now and get it started. But um, again, I don't know how I find these these clips to show you. <laughs> I'm always doing something different. Um, we will be doing something exciting and new probably on the next one. Uh, we'll have a look at these dailies. I'll tell you the story behind these dailies as well, the ones what you've just seen in the bed at the back of the, the allotments which had the, uh, the, the shallots in. So with that, uh, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you all in the next one. So it's goodbye from him. Bye now.